Delighted to say I'm joined by fo- former Galway herder, former Galway manager, current Roscommon manager, and obviously successful at, cl- at club level too with the likes of Gary Castle, uh, Anthony Cunningham. Anthony, first of all, how's life with you at the moment? That's good. Um, working from home like most people are. Um, and just watching the events day, day by day. And I suppose... Really, it's sport has taken a back seat and should, and it will come to the fore again and will help people recover, really. But I suppose the, the strongest emphasis now is on the healthcare and the brilliant work that, you know, the HSE and Tony Hoolan and, you know, the government are doing, really, and, and uh, the updates and the, the analysis and their, the healthcare workers, be, be the, be the, made the medics, the doctors, the nurses, the carers. So, you know that's that's rightly so we have to focus on that and we have to do uh, what's required to to eradicate the, the virus and a second season for you with, with ross common you obviously had all your best laid plans and everything thrown up in the air has it like how, what have you done to sort of scramble and sort of try and find some way to be useful or use this time well because obviously players can't train collectively but you want to make some use of it yeah i mean the collective trend has gone and rightly so you just you just can't be in large groups and social distancing and passing on the virus and all the, all the health um, reasons uh, for that but you know, guys still train on their own and they work off daily programs uh, be their home gyms or runs on the road or um yeah run on the field at the back of the house so it's come back to basics really uh, it's difficult it's difficult for players to keep that momentum up but i have to say you know they 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 plan their work to do the work to record their work um and and for that you know you have to commend the young sports stars of the country really in in the ga fields as as, as the ones we'd know uh the, the work that they do because it's difficult times it's difficult times for everybody quite some of them might, may have elderly people or parents or people that are in homes or in sick um so yeah it's it's difficult but i'd have to say you know you know, guys definitely want to keep their fitness levels up and are looking forward to getting back. Okay, can we jo- just jump back to your playing days when you first started playing? I mean, obviously you're you're noted as a hurler for for um, Galway and you have your couple of All-Irelands in the back pocket. But when you were growing up, you know, you're now a kind of a dual manager, if we can say, because you, you've done both at the highest level. Were you a dual player growing up or were you solely hurling? Uh, solely hurling. Um, so yeah, South Galway, it's hurling... Was the priority there? The, the only time we got to play football was when the hurling uh, club uh, were, were finished, uh, and there was a couple of. Uh, I think we played the junior B or junior C championship in Galway, but uh, limited success. But we probably had a couple of games at the end of every year when when we weren't allowed uh, we weren't allowed to play the football when the hurling championship was on. So yeah, but there was always an interest there, and and a team would be would be put together, and you you play a couple of games at the back end of the year, say September, October, November, when when club championship would be finished, but. Yeah, for it's it's just St Thomas's, uh, who've, who've gone on to be a much more famous club than when I was playing. But yeah, that was that. I remember the the the, the field being bought and the club being built freely and was formed in in, in 1968. But not not as far back as that. But you look at it, there was still only the GA was the only thing in your life really. Um, from a sporting point of view, went to school and already college in Gort, and you know hurled there with Tom Hellebert, John Cummins, um a good clear contingent as well because it was quite close to the border uh but for us yeah yeah it was colleges hurling it was underage in, in st st thomas's and yeah there's only a few games like the sad thing about it like when you look back on it versus what what's there now for 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 kids growing up is the amount of games and the amount of competitions and the amount of um summer camps you know that that wasn't there that time and uh uh, th- that was the last but for me growing up yeah it was to get on the county minor team and I was I was lucky enough to get on that uh, 81 82 and 83 like uh, three years on it so and uh, they got to, we got to finals um Kilkenny beat us in one uh, to be the second one but we were lucky to win in, in in 83 so that was a big step and so on and Sir Farrell was actually the the, the coach that year John Fahey was an, an internal manager down there from St Thomas he was there for years with with, with teams so yeah, that was that was really the foundation, really, of of going on to play under twenty one and senior. Yeah. Because you know Cyril wouldn't have had a, a massive playing career himself, and he was involved with those under twenty one teams, minor teams, like you're saying, and senior teams when he was kind of late twenties, early thirties. 
where was Galway hurling at at that time that you had someone that young who didn't necessarily have the massive iconic hurling pedigree over the team? You know, did you kind of sense, and I know there was definitely improvements coming and that All-Ireland was coming a few years later. Did you sense as a young lad that Galway were going places? Well, definitely, I think the success that we'll say those three minor finals of those three teams coming together, uh, there was uh, All Ireland Under Twenty One success in nineteen eighty three as well. It was the first minor, um, and just looking back there, Galway will come again. They won the last three minors. Um, surprisingly, they haven't won an Under Twenty One since two thousand and eleven, which was which was the team that I was with there, um, because I did three years with the Under Twenty One um, county team before I went into the senior. Um, so we slight worry there. There's not converting, but you do have to see the success, and you have to see at least teams getting to finals and showing a pedigree um, and, and showing that continuously. And Galway have perfected that now. They're probably the top team in the country um, for doing that now. But yeah, I mean, Galway was improving. There was, there was no doubt. Sir Fire definitely would be. If he was a modern day coach, he probably would be one of the top coaches as well because he was ahead of his time. There was no, there was no doubt about it. The fact that he didn't have a very strong pedigree. Was irrelevant. Was never brought up. Never questioned because he was so organised. His methods were good, um, and he was bringing. You know, he he would train say five out of seven days. Like he, he still wouldn't be killed. Okay, there might be one or two hard sessions there, but there'd be a skill session uh, purely just for skill at, at that time, which was unheard of really. And you know, you'd have the traditional sessions where we'd go to, we'd turn up for training and we play a match. You know, that wouldn't be every night with, with Farrell, for example. So yeah, it was a good setup. He definitely brought in. I don't think it was smart as well. And he brought in Phil Murphy, Bernie Connor were county board uh, guys, uh, and and really, so he had control of fixtures. He had control of of you know he had massive back from from Phelim and uh, from Bernie, back, massive back in from the from the board. So the setup was good. Did you have any particular heroes when you were growing up in terms of I want to be like that player and play for Galway, or was there even kind of players from other counties that you loved? Ah, yeah, sure. The only thing we did at home, my, my father was a postman and a farmer, and the only time we ever got away was to, was to hurling matches. Uh, there was no summer holidays. Uh, we did get brought to Crow Park, it was his uh, big thing, and definitely, I, the earliest match I can remember is the 75 league final. Go we played Tip, and John Connolly was, was the hero at that time. Um, PJ Quadra, full forward, no longer with us, sadly. Um, Joe, Joe Clark at full back, Iggy's brother, Iggy coming on the team. Uh, Sean Silk. So those were the heroes those years. And for for me and for us as a pastime, it was J matches. And you see that today with young 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 kids as well going to matches. And it's brilliant the amount of young kids now to go to matches. And it's it's definitely going to stand at them in the future. But boys and girls, and they're going to have a, continue their love for the game. Well, I presume you were up at the All Ireland final in 1980 against Limerick and Joe Connolly with people of Galway. We love you. Um, I mean. You know the way the likes of Clare a couple of years beforehand, they'd come quite close against Cork and probably left a Munster title behind them, so they never broke through that glass ceiling. Do you think without beating Limerick that time, that Galway's era, you know, the next 10 years when you're either winning All-Irelands or pushing for them, might it have not happened if um, if that victory over over Limerick hadn't happened? Yeah, well, as I said, they're, they're a very promising team. Started in 75, was a big break. Getting to them, win the league final. Getting to All-Ireland final in 75, 77. Uh, very hard luck story, 79. <laughs> was that a number of those finals and followed them right through? Uh, so it was nearly getting to a point of saying, gee, is it ever going to happen? But that was a savage breakthrough in, in 80. And you had to be there um, as a 15-year-old, 16-year-old. And then a couple of short years after that, then to, the following year to go on and be playing alongside him, basically, but as a minor, as a, as a, as a smaller team um, before the seniors played in 81, 82. Um, that was that was tremendous, but the breakthrough, you know, gave it a huge impetus in Galway again, um, because it wouldn't have, you know, it, it 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 definitely suffered because it wasn't in Munster, it wasn't in in Leinster, um, compared to today where there's an e- equal spread of matches. Now it's nearly teams have too many matches, but uh, that time, Galway uh, at every age had no match, no competition until you got to another in semi final. Um, and that took special effort to, to win that. So when you got called up to the panel late 84, was it something that you kind of expected? Was it a bolt out of blue? And how did, did you even remember getting the call? Uh, I do. It was actually in America on holidays. And um, the league that time was played in uh, in the wintertime as well. So 
Uh, Sir Verl went back in to take over the team in, in the winter of 84. Um, and then he brought in five or six of the minor panel that had just, the, the previous year, had just won. So that was his, uh, that and, and an under-21 panel that he had there. But he mainly brought in a very strong nucleus of, of the minor team, Joe Cooney, John Commons, um, Pat Malone. Uh, all those players that that had had won with Farrell in the in in the eighty three, so that was brought in uh, together with the new panel in eighty four, and yeah, it was winter training. I think the first match was against Leash um, in in the league of eighty four. So kicked off from there in uh, eighty five, went into the championship in eighty five, um, got to the All Ireland final. I had played in the same final against Cork and had come on as a sub in the final uh, against Offaly, but. Um, yeah, just, just for us, a, a tremendous win in the semi-final against Cork, against the fancy Cork team. No hopers from goal, very few at it. A uh, very, very wet day in Crow Park. And it just um, steamrolled from there on, even though beaten in, you know, in, in 85. Uh, good season, 86, got to the final again. But uh, yeah, against the Cork team, and maybe tactically that day, lost out. Um, having shown something... Um, if you wanted to look back and make comparisons, I think the 80, 86 semi final and the setup that the Galway had that year, I mean, playing three midfielders, played with five forwards, was, yeah, to a degree unheard of, but uh, it's very commonplace now. Now, now to play with four forwards, <laughs> or you might play with one in the full forward line or two max. Never played three inside anymore. So, yeah, so Farrell had that, that insight that time to, to go with that. Um, a lot of punters would say lot, we lost out in 80, 86 because we stuck with it for the final and should have tried something different. But um, yeah, still a very very young team really, and uh, yeah, that was that was it. It was it was it was brilliant times to be a youngster. Um, you know, there's nothing else in your life but but uh, but, but GA and Burnham. did Cyril get the sort of criticism that you see? You know, maybe Donegal or Tyrone puke football, this sort of stuff for using the third midfielder. Did he get slated like that? Uh, not really, because I think in 86, that was the, the win against Kilkenny, against a fancy team that had beaten as well in the league final. Just off eight or eight, seven or eight weeks later, we'd uh, produced this performance against, um, you know, the, the memory there of, of the Kilkenny full back line, and they haven't three in it, and they're looking at each other, and there was probably maybe one forward inside there for, for parts of the match. That was still there, so that that was, was new. Um yeah, I suppose he'd, he'd be akin to what, what David Fitz is maybe today, trying some different systems that are newer. But you see all teams at it now. Um, no, I mean, you know, he look, at, you'll always have guys with opinions. He might, he might have got uh, some 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 stick later in the 89 areas where maybe people would say probably management should have focused on the game more so than on the on the KD affair. Got to be good to Tony. But um, uh, no, look, at it, it, it was... Um, it was a breath of fresh air as well to be to be training and to to, to have a team that was common and, and and you know ultimately got a success. But I'd have to say, you you probably would have said that, that the team probably would have won more if if it were in the Leinster Championship or in the Munster Championship. But there was an even playing field that time. How do you reflect on your first couple of seasons and your own performances and the fact that you lost two All Ireland finals in a row? And I'm sure you didn't want to go into '87 and have that kind of label on you of losing three in a row. Yeah, it's 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 uh, it's when you go back and you look back at the matches. I think it was the ninety final was on there the weekend. Um, we probably we probably scored less in the two <laughs> in the two finals that we won, and 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 uh, you know what, what we conceded in the ninety final and, and scored in the ninety final was probably double what was in the the other two finals. So both matches were low scoring, and there was qu- there was quite a lot of pressure on, as you correctly say huge amount of pressure um, because you're going for three in a row, you're going for three all Ireland for losses in a row and that for any team is, is difficult and for a young, you know, the young team but thankfully, you know, in, in 87 got over the line, 88, you know, it's all the same so it did it did help massively um, um, but there was a lot of pressure going into that, that would be the one thing you'd think back on um, and, uh, you know, that, that, that was really uh, yeah, uh, you 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 would you would have to say it probably it probably dampened the performance to to a degree because of the amount of pressure was, that was there. But you know there wasn't going to be that conceded in in those matches because of 
maybe maybe we played in a lot of high score matches before that and, and lost out and what about your own performances did you feel like that you were growing into the team that you were kind of settling more and more as you went through 85 86 and into 87 yeah for sure for sure there's, there's no doubt and, and you know i suppose unfortunately you'd say that as as the years went on uh, even in a 90 you'd probably say that as the years went on you got better because it's like it's like today. It's like any young player coming in. It, it does take time. Uh, physically, it's demanding, um, and it, it it does take time to make the breakthrough. Again, I would repeat that it's you're you're still limited on the amount of championship minutes you're playing, um, and maybe the, maybe the leagues weren't as competitive as as maybe they are today. But for development purposes, it just took that that bit of time. Um, but they're hard won. If you just on, on reflection, if you look at all the great players that haven't won all Ireland's and you look at the Tony Browns, the Kim McGrath's, the players in Waterford, the players in Galway, I mean, he is Ollie Canning, the, the brilliant players that have played for the years and years and years and didn't get a chance to win an Ireland medal. You know, for us, that's the one thing you take from it, that, that we were so lucky that, you know, we were as a group coming together and, and we were so lucky to win. When when you reflect on 1987 and that final won 12 to 9 points I think over Kilkenny what's your abiding memory of that day? Uh, yeah it's low scoring it was going to be sort of hard hitting wasn't going to be very open play and yeah you, know, you contrast that with other matches that we played where it was you know there's a lot of you know the, the, the game flowed a lot better but um yeah, those those, those matches um, were similar. Uh, you know, we we'd beaten we'd beaten uh, Tipperary in the semi final, and that was a far more open game, a lot higher scoring, um, easier to play in. But yeah, and 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 Kilkenny had beaten us as well. So in previous years, so that that match was always going to be um, really closed down and not not as open as as you'd get today in today's matches. Just, just even yourself. Then you scored a point in that final as well. Was that, you know, to score a point in an All Ireland final when you get the win? That must, like, do you do you remember then even the feeling, the final whistle that okay, you finally won your own All Ireland medal? Ah, it's just more. It's you're always you're part of the team and you're just a player. And yeah, I mean, looking back, I, I would say if you if you said what was one of the biggest characteristics of the team, I would say. Even even today, and you look back, you say the modesty of the players. Modesty of the modern day players is is, is unquestionable. It's there. Um, just thorough gentlemen in in the, that you meet in the GA fields day in day out. But I mean, our our, our players and, and the Galway players and the Galway team of that era. If there was anybody above their station, they'd be quickly told it was modesty and they were gentlemen. Um, they took their sport seriously. But when it was over, it was you know there was nobody, you know putting their head above the <laughs> above the above the horizon really and saying look I'm great I'm this I'm that and and that would be frowned upon so you would have to say that the atmosphere was a tremendous atmosphere as if for a young player to, to come into and to learn from from other pay, other players and other people and yeah that's the same was in was, was in, in all the other teams that you play but you'd have to say that um, yeah I wouldn't be looking back. I wouldn't be one for looking back or saying, "Yeah, we scored this, or we scored that, or you missed this, or you missed that." But the the Biden memories would be the the time and the spirit and the crack and the camaraderie that we had there, and um, they were just they were just exceptional times to have gotten the chance to be part of setups. Really, if you if you said to me when you look back, you would say that was a brilliant setup, it was brilliant times, uh, great crack, great 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 days out. Um, and and a great time to to be associated with 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 with, with the brilliant setup. Who like you're talking about the crack there? Who were the who were the entertainers in the dressing room? Uh, I you know you'd always have different guys in different ways. Being you know it, there might not be so much an entertainment session going on in the in the dressing room, but uh, training the summer being together, um, you'd always look like. They definitely the civilian ends would be would be uh, you know the the characters. Um, Ollie Kilkenny was 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 a you know um, Tony Kilkenny. Uh, even even guys that you mightn't have you know said much, but they would they would still be really down there. But still guys to be able to play not tricking a guy. Or, um, Steve Mahan was a was a particularly entertaining guy. 
um, that that you know he he definitely uh, he wasn't uh, he wasn't shy about slagging left, right, or centre. So you you quickly copped on to become uh, you either joined them or or, <laughs> or sat in the corner. So um, yeah, it was it was brilliant. I mean, you know, Tony Keady, God be good to him, was was a tremendous character as well. Great great man to sing. Um, Ian Ryan. Uh, yeah, they, they just you know, Pat Malone in his own way, Joe Cooney in their own ways. Yeah, we really thorough gentlemen. Um, Hopper McGrath, recent success there with with Sarsfields. Um, uh, yeah, just Martin Nocton. You could, you just they, they were they were gentlemen to a core. Then, then those. Who did you have the like when you think back at that time? Like who, who were your biggest rivals? Was it you know you obviously had those games with Tipperary and the the Tony Keady affair whereby he he got suspended, but uh, at the other side the Tipperary man got away with more or less the same thing, which was playing in America. And the fact that you had, it was probably your own, you know, when it went to a vote, it was probably counties around you that kind of voted against you, whereas the likes of Tip said, we're happy for Keady to play. Um, were, were Tip the main rivals for you around that time, or was it Kilkenny, Cork? Yeah, I think I think initially it was Kilkenny, uh, but the biggest rivals that we got, because we played them in three three years run, uh, be, you know, uh, were, were Tipperary, and they were... Uh, they were probably the modern day Manchester United or the Barcelona of, of Hurland. <laughs> Babs Keating had come in. Um and there was some panache about them. They were a modern day team, you could say, in in, in set up and, and and the way they presented themselves. Um and they'd won a tremendous after huge weight in, in Monster, everybody's waiting for Tip to win and you know, with Nick English and Ken Sartre with Ken Hogan and goes right through uh, Richard Stake and went back. You, you named them all out there. Donny O'Connell said the forward. They were a swashbuckling team, put it that way. They they came with some panache. Um and then we beaten them in, in the in eighty seven, beat them in the final eighty eight, and then played them for the third year again in a row uh, in eighty nine and um they were huge rivals. And yeah, yeah, the eighty nine was it was I just wanted to be fortunate in that the GA, I think, more so than than it been than it been a goalie player or a Tipperary player wanted to to try and put some stop to you know guys going to you know, going to go out there to play a couple of matches during early summer, um, and that's that was really, as you correctly say, it was probably other counties that you know maybe took a took a stance on it. It wasn't really hurling counties, I think, at that stage that that voted that it shouldn't continue. Um, and it was misfortune that, that 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 Tony got suspended, but again in a match. You know, we could have won, but you know, to to very, you know, were, you know, went on to win that, deserving to win that, and uh, deserved their All Ireland. And um, with all due respect to Antrim, they were still going to win. Uh, you know, Antrim had shocked awfully that day, but uh, for us, uh, yeah, it 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 was huge, huge rivalry. I would have to say when we were talking about. I mean, with that time, yeah, there were there were there were big rivals, like, and you you just did not like, you know, the. You know, you didn't like to really beating you, so that was <laughs> that was paramount. But have to say, the day of Tony Keady's um, funeral, there, the Tipperary team to to a man that day in on mass, they came up to the funeral, and at the same time as the Galway team of of eighty seven, eighty eight, we went in to pay the respects to to Tony Keady, we the Tipperary in their uh, full panel. At, Decked out in their, in their temporary suits as 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 they did, um, uh, joined us at that time in in or more, and I thought it was so fitting and so, said so much about the G and said so much about Tipperary and that team. Even though we were really hardened rivals, um, I think that day, you know, spoke, you know, it, it just summed up what was so good and what is what what, what is so brilliant. Even though you you fight like tigers when you're on the pitch, um, a, a team that was that we played back in the 80s to turn up um, just a few short years ago to pay the respects to, to a guy that they hurled against. That that was brilliant and outstanding, um, you know, statement from Tipperary and just shows what, what the GA's made of. Do you, I don't know if you, you saw it, but the Tony Keady, Laker Gale, that, that came out, I don't know, maybe four or five years ago at this stage, before he passed, obviously, because he participated in it, they were going through the Tony Keady affair and the suspension and all this kind of stuff. And the show finished up with, and it's kind of eerie to even talk about it now, asking him, what would you like on your gravestone? And, and he said, like, Tony Keady should have played in 1989. Did you happen to see that? 
I did, of course, yeah, and uh, would have would have <laughs> would have slagged Tony and his or, you know, discussed it and had a had a good uh, bit of banter with him because, uh, in in later years Tony got involved. He was involved with the the county under twenty ones with Johnny Kelly. He was um he was back in with the Galway the senior setup and the under twenty one setup. He was he was involved. He was involved with us one of the years um, because they. They had the under when when I left the under twenty one setup to to go to the seniors. They they came in and, and worked hard with the under twenty one setup. So he was there. In um, it's strange in 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 as as when you retire when you go different directions. You know, even even though a lot of the players are involved with clubs or whatever, um, not that many get involved with the county. But it's great to see Tony those years. Um, and he was you know under twenty ones trained alongside us uh, and and whatever. But for for. For that year, should I should have played in in eighty nine? It's Tony's mantra, um, and he was well able to 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 have those quips, <laughs> for sure. But uh, it's it's it, on reflection. I I remember that day as well at the funeral where a lot of the Tipperary guys, obviously because they probably knew my face on the because I was involved with the senior setup, and a lot of them came up and chatted that day, and they were saying to me, "Who's that fellow over there?" And I said, "That's Steve Mahan or that's uh, Anna Ryan." And he had some of the Galway guys sent to me. Those those two the very lads there. You're then who were they again? Now is that that was Aidan Ryan or that's Bobby Ryan or oh that's that's Tony O'Connell. Um, because it, it, it's funny in in a way that you played so many games against guys and then you mightn't see them for twenty or thirty years. And I think today I think the G are better at that. I think the GPA are better at that. I think most intercounty footballers and hurlers know each other. They even know them. They know each other cross codes. Um, because they're at quite a lot more of of functions to 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 promote the game, or they're at to do some quite media work with yourselves and, and others. So um, that's lost a bit, I think, in in the older generations, and that's a big plus with with modern day players that, that they know all the other players and they know them. You know, I won't say quite well, but they they meet meet players a lot more than than we did when we played. I suppose the modern day guys probably w- or younger people wouldn't know how good Tony Keady was and like you hear the stories about him more or less assuming that 82,000 people were there to watch him more so than anyone else. So he's obviously very talented <laughs> but where would where would the likes of Joe Cooney and other guys rank in terms of like the most talented guys he played with? Uh, Joe Cooney would have to be I mean the, the, the top safe, you know definitely in the top three if not the, the best player and that I played with as as a young player coming through. Uh, Tony Keady was an exceptional. McInerney and Fiener D definitely in their, their full back line. But you take all the players, I mean everybody was probably afraid to mark Ollie Kilkenny because he was he was a really, really tough, tenacious cornerback. So nobody a trainer wanted to, to pick that side to mark him. If you weren't on him you'd be on Sylvia Lennon on the other side. So you you knew that even that well, you were probably going to have a few marks coming off the pitch. Um yeah, I'd, I'd grown up with with John Cummins. He was in separate side, side of me in school, and yeah, he was you know he was just he was just fanatical about being a goalie and being a top class goalie, and it was great to see him coming through. So right through, Pat Malone had been with me, and Michael Coleman, who who some say well they weren't as flashy as or maybe had said as much as uh, Tony or others, but, uh, were they effective, massively effective, um, and then up front. Yeah, I mean, we learned quite a lot from Noel Lane. Uh, Brendan Linsky was, you know, was, was there as a, as a huge physical presence. But um, McGrath and Octon were definitely Tony and and uh, Ian Ryan, really, really skillful um, player. And you just loved. You you wonder now if they were playing in the modern game, who'd be who'd be still tops? And I think you know Cooney's vision and his, you know, the game today is hugely about possession and finding the best man. Uh, recycling the ball, putting the ball into into space where a person can get the the best score. Um, he definitely would be a TJ Reid of today. There's no doubt about that. Do you think um, 1990 was the one that Galway left behind him more so than, than any other year? Joe Cooney on fire in that first half. It was only on TV the other day. Is that the one that you left behind you? Yeah, I think, and I I would also say that probably was the start of the breakup of the team, and was the was a nail in the coffin that that. We shouldn't have had. Um, had we won it, I think the team would have would have blossomed and gone on for another couple of years easily. Um, yeah, and then the manner of 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 losing it as well, being well up, having a lot of missed chances, self included. Um, yeah, yeah, and enough enough there probably to win two matches without a doubt. Um, had huge um, 
times of possession and really were on top of court for huge spells in the match. Um, and then to concede, maybe, you know, to concede five goals, you know, you'd have to say, you know, wasn't anybody particularly his fault, but it just, you know, because the Cork forward, time, Cork forward line that time were, were really special and had a, had a tremendous monster campaign that they really, you know, they really blew every team away, really, with their, with their scoring. Um, yeah, and, and, and look at it, it's, it's, as I said earlier, you probably reflected and said we scored more that day than we did in the other two All-Irelands that went and won them. And like, a lot of people would say, you know, they, they were bad All-Irelands that you won because the score was, was so low, but we conceded very little as well. Um, but it was that type of game to the open, Joe Cooney on fire, uh, you know, midfield on fire, a uh, lot of chances, but um, yeah, can't turn back the clock now. <laughs> but it was something that probably uh, you definitely uh, led to the team breaking up that bit faster. And what about your career? Because, you know, as we said, it started at, in 1984, but you kind of went working abroad, so you were on and off the panel towards the end. Yeah, 89, I got, I worked at Ericsson uh, based in Athlone, and then I got to work abroad for two years. But I came home for the summers, and it was a really good deal that I had the summers off to play hurling. So, yeah, come back and didn't get on the team in, in 89, but was a sub on it. And then I was home again for the whole summer. Said French holidays were very generous that time, so I got, got home and stayed back in the May or in the middle of May, and I was home for till September. So, yeah, great time. So it's a full time order for the for, for the for the summer. So, yeah, they were they were good, but uh, it was but a chance to work. I couldn't turn down really because it was a great opportunity to work in a foreign city, and and it was was uh, work wise was good. But um, yeah, um, yeah, did, when you look back on it compared to now, you would say that that that. You know the younger set of the team were, were were probably too young to have you know to have been given up, but there was a change of management. The new panels came in, and a lot of hurlers and goalers, so other 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 players got in and got to, to have a go, but didn't didn't really get out of the blocks really in in goals in the early nineties um, to get going again. Um, and it was probably you could say two to three years, probably too too early. You're you're correct in saying that um, that if if it were now, yeah, your 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 life span in as an intercounty player would be longer because jerry McInerney was another man who'd spend an awful lot of the year in america and then home to play the matches during the summer is there any other player i suppose even in the history of the last 30 or 40 years maybe ever in hurlan who's had that sort of an iconic look with the white boots and like i remember as a young lad thinking is he going around in a pair of runners here because i just couldn't get my head around the white boots and obviously the mullet hairstyle as well has there ever been a more iconic looking player than him well it's I mean, you said they were the white boots. Everybody has white boots now, or yellow boots, or orange boots, uh, and different hairstyles. Um, but Mac was really uh, very sallow skin. Uh, lived in um, lived in in, in Canberra by the sea, and uh, yeah, he went to he went to school in the same town as as we did. In we knew him as as, as young guys come going through. But he had always that bit of flair, dressed a bit differently. Um, you know, he he always had you know white white boots at, at at on the pitch, but he could have any color boots going out. You know, so yeah, I mean, he was he was uh, you could say the modern day soccer player back in the eighties. Uh, he was that flamboyant, um, but uh, so, yeah, a brilliant hurler, and he was he, he was very very quiet guy, and he went about his game always really with with very strong mental strength himself to to get himself right and to be right. And always wanted to produce his best. You could see him getting better every night of training um, for the big day. So he's really, really focused on on you know he knew he was going to be on the team. Uh, he'd, he'd always be, uh, you know, he he mightn't have been showing the best form in in the earlier part of the seasons, but he would always always be pushing himself for the, the big days. And uh, yeah, he rarely, rarely had a bad day. Really, he was he always peaked at the All Ireland semi finals and the All Ireland finals. So when we move on from from your playing days, how quickly did you get into management? And like, was your first intercounty job to take over the Ross Common hurlers midway through the two thousands? Yeah, that's right. I think two thousand and four. I think I was. Yeah, it was just. Yeah, so I I lived in since eighty six. I lived in Athlone, so I moved out and I lived in St Bridget's, where I, where I live now. Where I'm from now, um, so yeah, built a house there because I, I did 
you know, I had an engineering job in, in Ericsson uh, in 86, and then there was very few uh, multinationals employing um, uh, graduates at that stage. So, yeah, and look at it, it was, it was a brilliant place to go and work. And um, early 90s then settled into building a house and, you know, starting a family and working on and trying to get, get all sides going. Um, and that's the thing that, that, that hits players quite, quite, quite often. Like, everybody settles down, builds a house, family, and then you're trying to get hurling. So as the years went on, that got less. So, yeah, um, the local club here then pushed me to get involved with underage, uh, which I enjoyed. So I was doing two nights a week there with an under-14, under-16 team, I think, with two or three years at that, and that had gone quite well. They had a lot of young players, and it was a, a club that was really expanding and had a lot of pedigree. Was on the football side, so yeah, it it was easier for me to make training and do that work than than to travel around the country and back down to Galway, um, and so yeah, so Hurling faded out and I, I retired then in, in those years, uh, some through injury, cruciates and a few bits and pieces thrown in there as well. So yeah, and was 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 great. Uh, did Ross Cameron for us, but at the same time I was also doing work with with uh, Sam Bridgets and. We'd gone on then and we won three county titles and won on the third year, won the kind of title for the first time. So, yeah, and that was a massive help to the club in future years. Who we went on then to win the Ireland Club in 2013, uh, same day as my own club in St. Thomas had won. So, yeah, uh, so a lot of time spent with St. Bridget's and it was with football and with, with, with um, some good mentors there as well. Did some work with John O'Mahony. He was part of the club as well previous years to that so he he was with me in one of the management stints and you know really really good guy to learn off party shook crew played with sir kerry um he had he had uh, he works in the hudson bay hotel here and he had relocated to here he was you know mike mcbeerty who had, who had played with Donny gall and under 21 level and managed the county under 20 team in in uh, uh, over his years so there was there was a lot of expertise there so a lot of really good guys that uh, that i'd worked with and just got to, to like the, the Mahajan game, the coaching game, got stuck into that. And yeah, then spent a good few years of that. And then uh, Gary Castle, three years of those. And then back then, 2009, 10 and 11, I got a chance to go back to Galway and manage another joint team for three years. So um, there were three good years uh, as well. So that was, a, that was a big help to get them taken over the, the senior team. Yeah, because I remember your under-21 team beating Dublin in that uh, All-Ireland final in Thurless and very, very good display, a lot of pace that day. And just because I was playing with Cool at the time and a couple of the um, couple of the lads were on the team at that time because I remember the devastation. So it was pretty obvious you had good players coming and then you step up and take over the Galway senior job. And the first thing more well one of the early things you do is cut an awful lot of the panel that had been there in 2011 and you see Derek McGrath has done that other managers have done that is it a tough thing or was it easier for you because you're not actually living within the county so if there's barbs flying you don't necessarily hear them yeah it's a, it's look at it, it happens to everyone happens myself it happens it happens to everybody um that's the most difficult part of of, of inter county because you you far more players at disposal to you, you have to make tough decisions. You've got to say, well, there's a guy maybe 32, 33, is he going to be kept or are you going to put more faith in a guy 21 or two and he's going to get more game time? If you have too big of a panel or you have, you're, you're playing the older guys, um, the younger guys won't get that exposure. So you've got to probably put a bit of faith and put a bit of investment time into the younger players. Is it an easy job? hardest job you just you just the amount of players that you have to say listen it's 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 you know going to be part of the panel or it's 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 going to be just this year and and you know next year you know you know that they're probably not going to be there it's really really hard because their life there's nothing else in their life they might they might be married they might have a job but they might have everything they might have they might have been in life but their top of their agenda is hurling and that's all they want to do and it's really heartbreaking but it just happens all over the place that's that's uh, what you've got to do if you have a young team with three years of under 21 coming in. Um, so, yeah, those are quite a lot of players there that you wanted to give time and invest time in um, to get to, 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 to win, basically. Um, yeah, very, very difficult. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's the, the hardest part of, of, of the game, for, for sure, for, for anyone. And then, you know, that first season where you're taking over Galway, I'm sure it's probably... 
well, it's obviously a huge job and probably perhaps something that you'd always want to do. But I remember, I think it was just heading towards the start of April, you had a weekend whereby you were leading Gary Castle into an All-Ireland final replay and then playing Kilkenny in a league match the day after. And I remember at the time thinking this was an unbelie- must have been an unbelievably difficult weekend for you because uh, obviously a few months later you're winning a Leinster title, so everything is rosy in the garden then. But like you lost heavily the All-Ireland club final replay and then it was 326 to 10 points against Kilkenny. And I just thought to myself, that must have been one of the most difficult weekends for a manager to deal with. Yeah, it's uh, all around final day in, in St. Paddy's Day in a, in, a, in a football match. Yeah, probably had a win of it. Had chances definitely against against a brilliant Cross McGlenn team. I mean, they, they were also black and amber. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, kidding colours. Um, yeah, they were hardened uh, players, really, and very thorough players and, 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 and exceptional players. But was some run by Gary Castle that never won a Leinster title, never won probably a match in Leinster, to be honest. And and they yeah, they were a brilliant set of players and they're still going strong actually. And the backbone of that team still won a county final there just, just last year. Um with with, with Daisy Dole and John Gaffey and Carol Hinson all, all those still the Don Hart still playing. But um it, it it was just the workload at that time was was really heavy because obviously if you have a club team in an Ireland semi final and Ireland club final um, you're putting a lot of work you've gone a lot of nights at that but then equally you're trying to get off the ground and go well with, with the county senior hurling team so it was was the time uh, I, I think on the hurling matches they were significant in the development as well I remember um, one of the first matches was was um, was uh, the pre-season tournament match and Kilkenny were literally off of playing and and Brian Cody and Kilkenny arrived in, in the Pierce Stadium and they're dead up. I think they played something like 13 of the Ireland final team um, back in early. Um, yeah, definitely. And uh, obviously, you know, the the level that they were at compared to where we were at was was very visible and very, very much, you know, uh, you, you just, that was why they were such a brilliant team and, and they had such brilliant hurls and, and, you know, they were, they were outstanding. But every day we played them, uh, we were getting closer, and you had to. T- you sort of had to take those beatings, and you had to take the, the the exceptional days, and you could see the gap closing all the time for sure. And I'd say that today, even when you're coaching teams, the more times you play, say Dublin today in football or Limerick now in hurling, um, the better you are going to get as a team as well if you have the right attitude of learning. And we learned a lot from that, those Kilkenny games and. It, it did help us uh, in, in winning the first Leinster title in, in, uh, in 12. But there, like, I mean, everyone's human and everyone has their doubts and stuff like that. After that weekend, 25 point loss to Kilkenny, would you have your own doubts? Because it was your first season and I'm sure there was plenty of, like, hurling counties don't belong hammering their managers or their players if things don't go well. And that was that was a, that was a tough one. No, I, I don't know whether, whether it was because of where I'm living or because I don't read the papers or... You know, you still believe in your setup, your players. Primarily, you believe totally in the players, in your players, and you keep working away, and you believe you believe totally in your management team. And you know, with Matty Kenny and Tom Hellebert at that time, and we just we just plowed on with more work and more work, and improving ourselves as as, as coaches and improving the team uh, and trying new things, developing for the players. Um, you just you just uh, had to get to the level that Kilkenny were at. They were an exceptional team, um, as they've proven. That was an outstanding team. But the more times you played them, the better our players got. There's no doubt. And you just ca- you just can't. I mean, it, the same the same arises today. If you if you if you play the Dublins of, of this world today in, in football, as an example, and they beat you seven, eight, or ten points, the amount of learning that you do and the amount of um, where they brought the game. And, and, and how to play the game. Um, same with Kerry, if you play Kerry in a challenge match, that's that's, that's a brilliant way of learning. Um, same, with, same, same with playing, you know, as I said, Limerick have, have brought in a massively new dimension out to Horn. And the more times you play, or Tipperary, uh, Tipperary are the champions. I know, I know Galway played them recently in the league. They'll have, their younger players that day will have learned far more than, uh, you know, a month's training. So, you have to keep working and you have to keep believing in your players and that there's no there's no there were difficult times but they were they, they, there's no no different than what will be there next week or the week after <laughs> there's, there's always huge competition and 
um, same with yourself there with with Kula. Like they they're you know they 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 brought a, a tremendous club team, but they they had tough days as well at the office, and but they gradually got got through it and and evolved and and really got to the top. Did you, um so in that twenty twelve Leinster final when you beat Kilkenny by I think it was ten or eleven points, did you ever have a day where like everything just happened perfectly more so than that you know like Joe Cannon got a goal after a couple of minutes Davy Burke got a, uh, a point as well Davy Burke got another point whereby he got blocked down and he ends up kind of spinning and hitting the ball over the bar as he's flying through the air like did you ever have a day where it clicked like that yeah you, you definitely have several days and you're separate no matter I mean Kenny came back into the match as well like a lot might have been realized that and so, some of the, there were a couple of critical moments and a couple of critical blockdowns uh, that just happened at the right time for us. Uh, and and you do get you you do get passages of play in matches as you're going along that say yeah look at today's our day we were lucky there. Um, Sheffield might have been gone through with one or two and got hooked or got blocked, which would be rare. Um, you know they tried their damnedest as well as they do to get back in, but. You know, it 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 did it did happen for us that day. Probably caught them probably slightly unaware as well in that. Um, yeah, in that they they were saying, yeah, look, we've beaten these guys well this year, and if you beat a team naturally and you're 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 turning up again to play them again, and and it's only a Leinster final in brackets, <laughs> um, you know, they might have been a small bit off colour that day, but uh, yeah, you know, and you know, they they were really. That that team or or the, you know the 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 the, the, the Tipperary team of today or the or the or the um, or the Dublin team they have, they have so much class and so much uh, expertise that that are so they were so hard to beat but uh, to win that day was was a was a really you know that that was a massive lift for for that set of players and uh, for the company. which was like if you were to go through the two All Ireland finals well three I suppose with the replay in twenty twelve which one do you feel more you had a right chance because even I think the second day didn't you get early goals and everything and it felt like this could happen and speaking with um, remember speaking with Matty Kenny afterwards who was your who was uh, on your management team at the time he kind of felt that because you'd been on the road for so long in 2012 he started training so early and training so hard that the last thing he wanted was a replay to drag the season on a few more weeks because you had probably hit your peak and were probably going down in terms of conditioning. Now maybe maybe you have a different opinion on it. But was it twenty twelve or twenty fifteen when you were three points up at half time and Kilkenny turned it around? Which which would kind of you look back on more and think that was the one we should have won? I never it's hard to know, we probably should have won but <laughs> but yeah, you'd have to say if you play a very, very experienced team and you bring them to a draw uh, they're really, really, they're really going to be difficult to beat in a replay. So twelve was going to be, was was going to be. Without we saying it, we wouldn't be saying that, of course. Um, but in hindsight's great. Um, and you look back on it, uh, didn't didn't play as well the second day, but uh, they they definitely, um, yeah. It, it the, the start as you as you correctly say in twelve was 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 and guys were playing on a huge amount of freedom as well and. That's the other side that, uh, you know, as, as you go on in, in playing with an inter-county team and you do uh, subconsciously get beat, you know, you reflect back and you say, Jesus, they beat us again in 12 and we should have won that day as well. And when you're playing at 15 and we are up well at half time and, you know, had chances again in the second half subconsciously, I think, you know, the fact that the, that team beat you previously, that, that kicks in as well. So it's probably going to be harder in 15. So... Uh, had, had we won in twelve, maybe maybe the big run that Kilkenny uh, they might never have got there, but uh, that's been an been injustice to them. But for all players, they tried their damnedest on on both occasions, and even even in the uh, fifteen match, like we we're in hard luck for a goal, Sir Donnan's hit the post, so we're still in the match and getting towards the match peak again, towards the finish of it, and just running out of time, so. Really, really, that bit of luck, which you do need, you do need the breaks. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Um, I suppose they desert us in, in the second half of both matches, coupled with, you know, the the, the, re- the sheer brilliance of, of these Kilkenny guys who have massive experience as well. That's the other thing that you probably, when you're playing and when you're involved, probably don't realise what they have built up in their reservoir of experience. And uh, they needed every bit of it to, to beat us in those years. Um, 
Yeah, I, I, I think recently the uh, those 12, was it the 13 or 14 final they were saying recently was probably one of the best finals that they saw. It was Tipperary. 2014, yeah. uh, 2014, but on that year, we 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 played uh, Kilkenny. So they said that they were the two best. That was the best final was what a lot of pundits afterwards said and it was the best match and they were the two closest teams, whatever. But that year we played Kilkenny uh, in Tullamore. Could have won it at the Deaths. Um, a brilliant score uh, by Canning, brilliant score by Shefflin. And like Joe, Joe was such a tremendous player for us. Um, and, you know, showed all his genius, you know, and did those big games. But uh, to go back then six days later and play them again, uh, you know, lost out. And then a week later in the qualifiers, we were playing, uh, we had to play Tipperary. So we, we had three matches in something like, you know, in, you know, a really, really short time. And we're well up against Tipperary at half time, and 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 that thing came back to, to go on and to, you know to get to the final with, with Kilkenny and playing that classic match. Um, so we're talking about the, you know that's that's how good goal we were at that time, and very few would look at that year, which was we, the year we say well we 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 bowed out, we didn't have the success to get to the finals, but we're still so so close and. Yeah, just so 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 disappointing that that um, yeah you could have been ahead of those two teams with a small because um you know people kind of laud the fact that uh, Michal Dunne put Joe Canning centre forward, but actually that game you're talking about against Tipperary and Thurles, you had Canning centre forward that day. How how much instruction do you have to give a player like that? Obviously, he's got all the talents in the world, but you had him in full forward, and he, like you know we all remember that goal against uh, Kilkenny in the Leinster final where he's. It comes in from distance and he catches it on the spin and buries it. He obviously could score brilliant goals, do anything with the ball, really. How much instruction do you give a player like that? Or do you just say to everyone else, just get the ball to Joe and then let, let's watch the fireworks after that? Ah, you, you, you don't really. You just let him play. And there would be a debate, like, where's he best served? I think in latter years, definitely, you know, the fact that he can come out, he's more of a playmaker. Uh you know, when he gets the score out from, from the centre-forward positions or he's involved in the middle third in plays, he's very, very intelligent and uh, can bring far more players into the game. Um, he, he's just natural genius and ability. You don't have to say anything to, to, to do Kenny he never did. Uh, you just you just always kept pushing him to say, keep believing in yourself, go go for the next ball, even if you don't win that one, yeah, you will win You will in the next one. So... It's really belief, and those are the pointers that you're trying to, you know, to, to give to the, to the top 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 class players, and uh, you know, to advise that there will be times in a match where you are not going to win every ball. Um, you know, you're playing on top 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 defenders, but the ball will come. So have you have your patience, have your time. It will come, um, and keep believing. Apart, you know, in in general plays. He's, he's going to figure those out and know where to be in the best position. It was the same with Joe Cooney, it's the same with David Brook. It's the same with all all the top top players. Um, they just they just natural and they know the where to be. So your setup you would work on and your your system of play you'd work on, but the players individually, um, yeah, you you never be saying something like give the ball to Joe or like that would be, <laughs> be under ten or twelve stuff. But yeah, invariably the top players are on more players. And and uh, it's how you play off them, uh, and to to give them better options is is uh, is probably what you concentrate on quite quite so a bit. So well. remember in 2012, uh, after the draw in All Ireland final, he was quoted like I think he had to show up for an event maybe in in Turles to do with I don't know some promotional event or other, and he had talked about um, Kilkenny perhaps being on sport and or JJ Delaney or what was being said to the referee during that drawn final. There was a huge kind of countrywide focus on that. Is that something that bothered you at all? Or do you think it had any tangible impact on how your preparations for the replay? I don't even, I don't even recall it to be honest with you. That's how little <laughs> that's how little uh, heed we paid to it. So um again at that at those times as the years progress, there's, there's probably more attention on media, definitely, and there's, but you either you either get absorbed in it and get bogged down in it, or you you just do your press night and you keep it at a distance. And for us, it was keep everything like that at a distance. We wouldn't get involved in it. I, I honestly, because you had so much time and you're preparing so much for training sessions and you're watching videos and your analysis and you're 
concerned about injuries and team. There's so much going on when you're involved with teams that you're not uh, involved in anything that goes on outside. So you just get smart and you don't you don't pick up the papers, you don't go on social media, you don't go uh, online. And uh, yeah, there's tips you're giving to players. It's it's that as well. So I don't even recall that to be honest with you. That's that's how much you'd be involved in in in, in playing. So um, yeah, look at the, you'd always say to players, there's always going to be, you know, some of them would ask saying, well, I have to do this interview or I have a press night here. What you know, is there is there anything we want to say or not say? Or uh, I'd say just just relax and be yourself. But. You know, you'd always be given the tips to say, well, look, at anybody can bend any bit of a story anyway. So if there is an outcome of something you said that it's not good, that's, you, we know well, everybody knows well you didn't mean it. So don't don't ever worry about anything like that. It's probably a bit like this. Someone will pick up something and say, oh, you never said such and such a player. He, he should have won an All-Ireland medal. Um, yeah, look, at, yeah, you, you, just, you, just, you just want the players to be natural and to... You know the, the the players like of, of of Joe Canning's stature and his honesty as a man would never he never offend or hurt anybody uh, and uh, same the same with with all the players that were there um, for, for for me were just total gentlemen to work with and like that that period like uh, 2013 the end of 2013 Niall O'Donoghue of course took his own life and I, I did a piece with um, with Davy Burke Connor Whelan and and um, uh, and Niall's family afterwards. It's unbelievably moving. How how difficult was that at the time as the leader of that kind of panel to see the effect that that would have had on 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 the players? Never mind, obviously Niall's family. But that must have been a very testing time as manager. Yeah, I mean Niall was such a you know a, a brilliant young man, a really lovable, adorable young man because he was uh, he was a, he was he was such a character very quite spoken but you know um just just wanted one thing and that was to be better at hurling and and still to this day like he he that was his life and he he just adored hurling and that was his his his, his way of expressing himself and um yeah it was it was really really tough on 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 Niall and really tough on the family but it did it did it did knock a bit out of out of young players of his own age quite a lot of them on on the panel that stage at that time um and that's that's natural that that would you know that's that's natural that that would happen or that was one of the outcomes from it that was it was difficult for sure um because a lot of them had, had played in that under 21 team and Niall was was you know was 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 part of of, of, of that gang um yeah it, it, it's it's really really difficult and and there's a lot today on on wellness and you know when guys suffer really with, with 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 being unwell and that and i think yeah it's it there's a lot more help there now there's there's definitely there's definitely it's it's, it's a similar of, of having an it's same as having an injury or having an illness and and you just get it right and we tried at that time as well with with niall to to work with certain people and getting it right but yeah it's it's something i think everybody should look out for um in every facet of life but you know particularly when you're involved with teams that that you'd be probably more conscious of it now but uh right you know on reflection it did it did knock us back a bit but um you just it just needed time and healing and 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 you know there wasn't that big of a you could probably sense that for the first couple of matches after that 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 you know it was it was going to be first couple of training sessions after that that you know the buzz wasn't there but it did look at in in in, in memory of Neil guys did they pulled together and wanted to go and win for 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 Nile and David Burke, you know, brilliantly um, on his All Ireland final speech mentioned Nile and saying it was a special place for Nile in that panel and that in that win and um, that's so good to have as a memory and and so so good for Nile and his family. You know? Did you like? You talked earlier about how difficult it is to to sort of drop players off the panel. I mean, ultimately, you know. You, your time came to an end there to sort of and the players kind of got that message across so i'm sure that was very difficult but when you go on and then watch them win in all ireland a couple of years later is are you kind of a little bit torn because you're like i brought a lot of those players fairly far and then you obviously would have liked to have been involved in some way was was it difficult that way or were you just happy for them well you'd, you'd definitely be happy um you'd be definitely proud that you'd helped in some small way over the years of bringing them 
uh, so when, when they left minor quite a lot of them to 21 to into senior setups um, I would say the setup that we started up in 12 was yeah it we would hope that it was the start of a really really strong management setup uh, with good coaching top class facilities and and bringing it right through I introduced gym work and a lot of preparation over the winter that now is 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 just day in day out work for teams so you'd be very happy that you'd you'd, you'd helped in a lot of ways but uh, yeah look at it's it's difficult that it, it, when you're in a management game or when you're a county player or whether you're a club player even you're there for a fine it's a, a small piece of time really in in the overall the club always exists when you're gone the county always exists when you're gone the team will always go on there will always be a team even now with the different times we have coronavirus um like you know the focus is on on the country and supporting in every way we can to 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 eradicate and to, to stop the spread of, the, of of a deadly disease where people are dying so that's our focus now is to support every single person we can um like my mother's in in in, um, in the alzheimer's unit in the home and okay for the last number of years but the staff there are tremendous like and they're petrified that they'll you know bring the, the the virus into the home when you speak to them you know every every week you, you speak to them and and you ask how they're doing and you 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 take that amount versus sport pastime and and the hard luck stories you'll say you know you 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 say that pales into insignificance compared to to what the country is facing now but you know to go back to 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 that you know my my time is 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 only for a couple of years or a couple of months or whatever amount of time Ross common decide that i'm with there now um whether i'll you know be with a club or a county thereafter i i don't know uh you're always on a, on on a finite amount of time in any setup um yeah you'll have regrets that that you hadn't been part of the of the of the, the team that won in 12 and in 15 um but you you can't begrudge anybody's success um and, and definitely did not uh, begrudge any player or any setup and for me all and the boys that you'd win yeah tremendous and and yeah it's, it's, you, you know you'd always want to be. it's the same same as you were growing up and you said well I'd, I'd like to be an exceptional soccer player or rugby player or and, and you see them win the world cup or or, or or a champions league you say well what if i played professional sports and yeah you probably had that that regret growing up saying yeah i'd love to play it, sport every single day of the year you know uh um in in the same way yeah you, you'll have you'll have regrets yeah i'd love to be out on the field there or whatever but for, for, for me no i mean just just you 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 have to move on it was difficult at the time to answer your question difficult but uh but yeah that's the game that you're in it's 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 a management and coaching and playing i am um, i've been with it with the county teams and even club teams is difficult in that uh, there's a lot of guys that want your place um they will change you out after a number of years so that's that's the nature of the beast so you've obviously at the top level managed teams and of course after finishing up with galway you then ultimately went and you were part of pat gilroy's management team with the dublin hurlers and, and obviously face galway too but the question i'm curious about is how much commonalities are there between both codes? Because Pat Gilroy has, like yourself, managed at the top level in both intercounty hurling and football. Then I see the likes of James Horn managing Mayo for a second time. He uh, managed Turlock Moore's club hurlers, uh, club hurlers who were in Galway. So yeah, just uh, to throw it out generally to you, how much commonalities are there between the two codes? Well, the setups are quite similar in that you have. Uh, you have your panel, you have your medicals, you have your physical trainers, quite quite very similar. You have your programs, you have your gyms. The, the game is obviously different, but there's quite a lot of similarities as well. But, you know, you're working week on week of what worked well last weekend. Can we get better at that and what didn't work? So there's analysis that goes on. It's got a lot of video work that goes on. Uh, individual coaching, there's group coaching. Um, you're working day in day out with your coaches and saying, this is what we're going to concentrate on. That's what your agreement is. Um, that we get better at X, Y, and Z. You know, our touch is off on hurling, our touch is off on the football, um, spilled too many balls in the tackle. Um, so, yeah, a lot of commonality. So the system and the way it plays is, it's it's like work. We, it's, they're, 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 you know, one is, one is football, very, very similar setup. You have a panel, you have to, 
trial guys, you have to let guys go, you have to give development time to players. Um, so you pick and choose a match, you know, so that all, all of that same. Coaching-wise, there's quite a lot that's got a bit closer. They're both field games. Obviously, um, Cullen's, you know, it's faster and it's 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 um, it's up and down. So it's it, but you take Harlan now uh, compared to where it was versus uh, and football. Um, so a number of years ago, if you played a blanket defence, if, if you played against seven defenders in Harlan, there was there was talk, there was consternation near, nearly about it. But now it's a, it's a given. If you play a Wexford, they have a certain for, formation. If you play a Limerick or a Kilkenny, or definitely Tipperary, you have a formation that they played last year created a lot. You rarely have three in the football line ever now. Um, that's that made me quite a lot of that that I've taken from football. Um, kickouts in football are huge and uh, creating space. Um, and now, now hurling the restarts from hurling and and where where you can pick a player, how you can create space, how you can uh, get your restarts. That that's very very similar as well. Hugely similar. Um, yeah, obviously if you're defending. Uh, you know, you're using a stick to give a man out at you, but basics of defending are you you just want to keep your man, your opponent on his weak side. You want to keep him outside you. You want to keep him. Yeah, you you, you definitely don't want him cutting in. Yeah, so that's quite quite a, quite a huge point of it. But just there's, there's a lot of parts as well on the football that's evolving. Um, definitely a lot of the patterns of running, um, the defensive arc that you see quite a lot now in, in football setups are are are, are new. Um, in involving in the last two or three years, a lot of them brought by the Donegal team, by the drone team, but you know, perfected to to an arc now by by Dublin. Um, yeah, so and and that's that faces the traditional Kerrys or Roscommons or Galways as much as any as any other team. So there's, there's always evolving evolving structures and patterns and and uh, coaching sides that have to be encountered both in hurling and football for sure. But, Getting a lot more similar, for sure. And then just a, a question about football. Like, this Dublin team have been so dominant over the last number of years. I, is, it, is it daunting even trying to close the gap on teams like that? Uh, well, you could have said the same thing about the Kilkenny team and the, on the Hurland Stakes, that they were so far ahead and they could win by how many points they wanted on any particular day. That comes in, 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 in the history of time when you look back at it. There will be dominant teams... Um, did in hurling or in football or as I said earlier on the on, on you know great Barcelona teams for for many years they could win whenever they wanted to or I I might say the Liverpool team of of of, of uh, Bob Paisley's era whatever and maybe maybe now or whatever so you you you'd have to say that that happens at times with dominance of teams but um no I I, I definitely think Dublin had. They have a huge conveyor belt as well, and they have the regeneration and the population of new players every year. They are populating their 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 panel and their team. Um, that's that's they are going to keep it very fresh. Like they they that's that's one thing that catches other teams, and that they're there for a while, and and they do get complacent or get that bit older or tired. Um, that's going to be more difficult uh, because of Dublin and the, the amount of talent they've coming through. But no, I, I definitely think that there there will be there will be a time when they're beaten. There will be a time when when the other teams get up to their level more so than, than Dublin dropping down. But uh, yeah, and to, you know to go back to your question, Pat Gilroy had probably set the wheels in motion of that in Dublin massively. He'd brought a similar systems into the Dublin setup, um, but. You know, there were parts of that that were new. They were new for me working with Pacto, and, and it was a really enjoyable year. Um, and it was great to see. I think for the hurlers, it was great to see that they were getting. You know, that they were they were proud that yeah they were getting a guy like Pat, who was rubber had rubber stamped and set up what, what was happening in football. And it was very very similar. It's very very similar. The 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 come to medical staff was is is similar across both codes in Dublin. Um, uh, the, you know the training facilities same thing so yeah um and you know had had very good good players coming through the cooler players really, really had brilliant success there and, and it, that you were part of and Matthew Kenny was part of uh, group, uh, you know that were coming through and you'd be hoping I, I'd be hoping as as that, that, that Dublin would, would get make the breakthrough and really get to be a, a top class uh, hurling team in in the, in the same way as, as as their footballers. I think I think it will happen in time. It is a huge amount of skillful players and a huge amount of work being put in at underage in Dublin, and that is definitely 
um, with the coaching structure, both hurling and football is paying off massively to, the, to them. And look at they've, they've gone, they've done that, and it's up to other other county companies to do again. But they will get. And then just a final question: You've been very good at your time. Whenever the coronavirus uh, passes and <clears throat> teams can go back playing, how long of a sort of a, a period of you know collective training of playing challenge matches? How long basically do you think teams are going to need before you go into competitive action? I think I think the longer that we're out, the shorter time you have when you go back, because there will be pressure. If there's an instance that, that there's no championship until July, for example, then I think you'll only get two weeks. Um, you would like to get three weeks. You'd love to get four weeks. But, you know, if you've got three weeks, um, I think what you'll be trying to do is it, you'll, you'll be cramming a bit, so you'll run the risk of injury as well. But you'll have to be careful on, on the amount of, of time. But uh, you will want to get guys playing matches and get your, get your movements going again, uh, practice on... On, on, on getting your combination play, um, yeah, all all of all of those events, um, yeah, but uh, it's going to be it's going to be difficult, and and uh, there, there's there's quite a lot of unanswered questions there at the moment. Like, will 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 there be large crowds turning up to? Will they be allowed? Um, you know, when 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 is definitely when when is the right time to do this definitely not now um the focus has to be on survival and um keeping keeping what we've been asked to do done diligently you know washing our hands keeping the distance and respecting what the that you know the brilliant the brilliant people who are heading it up in in, in ireland and what they're telling us um but when we get back you know you will need a couple of weeks um i think it'll be shorter um, the longer we're out because there will be a pressure to try if it if we do get back there'll be pressure to get uh, club matches included as well at some stage uh, that that definitely has to happen because clubs are the, at the bread and butter really and they've got to survive and they've got to they've got to get game time as well and that accommodates far more players would you would you be in favor of knockout intercounty competition or would you rather keep this the same structure and maybe try and any gaps that are there in terms of like weeks off maybe tighten that up and maybe I don't know, the club might go towards the year end and even feed into 2021. That's assuming we get back sooner rather than later. Yeah, I think I, I think the one that's worked in the league where you play two weekends running, you have a third weekend off, then you play another two weekends running. I don't think there's anything wrong with that whatsoever. I think that should be closer anyway, irrespective of. Um, there shouldn't be, well, I played today and now I'm not playing again for another four weeks. That shouldn't be, shouldn't be there. Um, I do think results on the day, have to have a result on the day. Uh, I think everybody welcomes that. that that's that, that's it there. Um, you know, I, I I think there's a lot of people employed as well in the GA. A lot of brilliant people employed in it, and they're now um, okay. You know, thankfully being paid and 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 not working. But I do think that the the GA to survive needs a revenue stream as well. It's a business. Um, you know, a lot of people criticise them on that, but it is a business, and that has to happen. Um, so I think they need the games, they need the revenue, um, and it needs to regenerate again. But if the whole season is lost, is it the end of the world? No. The, the, the biggest thing in this country for you know 2020 is survival and that we don't lose um, our old folks and that people are safe and that there's no necessary deaths. It's to keep that at a minimum. Um, sport has its place and will have its place. And more so than anything else, you know now it's needed because people... You know they need their identity. They need to get to their match the weekend. They need to shout and lose their head maybe to shout for their local club team or their county team. And that uh, that's so prevalent now, and you hear so many people saying that. But um, that 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 will happen. And I think it will sort itself. And as you said quite rightly, if if it goes until December, uh, yes, yeah, so, so be it. Both both club and county. And uh, yeah, if if it meant even the latter stages of the club finals weren't played or were postponed to next year I think that's not the end of the world but to get to get the masses out playing from whenever is the safest time is yeah it's it's I'm sure it's planned and uh, biggest thing though would be yeah shorten it up and get results on the day as I said uh, Anthony thanks very much for your time you were very good with it and uh, best wishes to you and your yeah thank you very much